And I think it's so important. Bill Golden, to me, is a pioneer, a missionary, a person who looks forward, not in reverse. People don't know about Bill. Bill was on the original team with Bill Ruckel's house when they started the EPA so many years ago in the Nixon administration. Many people do not know that Bill Golden is the number one person who created the concept of cleaning up the Boston Harbor when he was the city solicitor of the city of Quincy. He always looks ahead rather than reverse. He understood that in the Eisenhower administration in the mid-50s, that to create commerce, you needed an interstate highway system. And so people like yourselves from different industries, from legal backgrounds, from engineering, from real estate, they all came together and they came up with this idea of the interstate highway system. And we all know that that really was the engine that created this wonderful economy that we have in America. Bill sees what we're trying to do today is the same thing that those pioneers did in the mid-50s about creating the interstate highway system. The weather is not changing, not for the better, but for the worse. We have to do things to protect ourselves and to protect the economy and to make this a thriving, wonderful country and city and cities along the seaboard and the coastlines. We can't put our heads in the sand. We have to be positive. We have to recognize that we have to do something forward. That's why we're here in this conference today. To my knowledge, this is the first one anywhere. And I have such respect for Bill that he's recognized this because he didn't want to tell his son, Braden, that he could have done something and he didn't do anything. You people here today, you can tell your children and your grandchildren, I was on the ground floor in trying to make this a safer and a better country. So I'd like to introduce my friend, Bill Golden. Good, good morning, and John, thank you. Uh, I didn't expect that. Um, just an uh, introduction as Nietzsche's uh, executive director would have done just fine, John. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here this morning. I want to particularly thank Dwayne Morris, uh, the law firm uh, that is the founding sponsor of this organization, for seeing what we were trying to do, have the vision to understand the objective of our organization, and to be the first to raise their hands and say, we're here, we're going to uh, jump in with all uh, our people, our resources, and uh, begin uh, what is going to be a long and, and arduous uh, campaign. I also want to thank uh, Suffolk University uh, Real Estate Center, uh, the director Richard Taylor, my friend and former Secretary of Transportation is here today. Uh, I want to thank as well um, James Cantwell, Representative Cantwell, who has been instrumental in uh, uh, launching this effort. Uh, Jim has been very much involved in the FEMA uh, issues for quite some time and uh, has become recognized as one of the leaders, in not just in the state, but in the nation on, on this issue. Uh, we also have the MWRA advisory board here, led by Joe Favaloro and many representatives from many towns. We have the Engineering Center, who has been, is also a sponsor of this event today. And uh, having uh, present here today uh, many of its members, who represent uh, some of the largest engineering firms in the world. Uh, I believe uh, Dean Groves is here. Uh, he represents a 60,000 person engineering firm. Uh, today what we've done is to have the first ever national symposium 
on coastal and harbor infrastructure. Uh, up to now, uh, there have been, uh, there's been tremendous leadership at the local level and regional level. Uh, Boston Harbor Associates, who you'll be hearing from uh, later today uh, through Julie uh, Wormser, has done a magnificent uh, project on Boston and what rising sea levels, extreme storms, and aging infrastructure are going to do uh, to this area. Uh, but all of these efforts, uh, whether it's uh, Garrett Graves from, from Louisiana, probably the, the, the if, if, if community response, responsible action has a poster child, it is uh, Garrett Graves and what Louisiana is doing now after Katrina. But this is just one effort. Cynthia Rosenzweig, uh, a noted uh, scientist, uh, one of the top in the world, who works for the Goddard Space Center and the Earth Institute at Columbia. Uh, she will talk about New York and New Jersey and what's happening after Sandy. But these are isolated responses to an issue that is coming at us like a freight train. Uh, what we're talking about today in terms, of, uh, in terms of, of rising sea levels, extreme storms, and aging infrastructure is not a new topic. People have talked about this for decades. It simply is that people haven't done anything about it. And every time that somebody starts talking about it in a group in Boston or in Norfolk or in, in Florida or in New Orleans or in San Francisco, there's somebody that raises their hand in the back and says, wait, we can't do that. There's no federal funding. There's no single agency federal leadership to lead the way for this. We don't have a national policy. We don't have a national program. We don't have national funding. What we have is a disaster relief cycle where we spend billions of dollars. Between Katrina and Sandy, we'll probably, sp probably spend $200 billion before we're, we're through. And what are we doing? We're repairing 19th century infrastructure, repairing 1930s infrastructure, and trying to get things up and running in a way where that infrastructure is weaker than it was before and is going to be even more vulnerable. What we're starting today is a call to action. Today is the beginning of a campaign. And that campaign is to reimagine the coastlines of the United States, not just to defend them from rising sea levels and extreme storms, but to build into this infrastructure multiple benefits, transportation, communication, better community development, more livable communities, at the same time avoiding the triple threat that we now face to our national security and our national economy. There was a time when we believed in ourselves as a great maritime nation. I invite any of you to go to the Port of Boston, go to the Port of New York, go to the Port of San Diego, go to Galveston, go to any of our ports. They are not 21st century ports. They are 19th and 20th century ports at best, and in decay, and not prepared at all for the global economies of this century and the next. So that is what this is all about. We're off on a mission today. Our mission is to build a public and private coalition that not only has the vision of reimagining the coastline, but will bring together the kind of political force that will be necessary to support all of these local adaptation plans and resilience plans, bring them together in a systemic approach, as the Dutch have done, as you'll hear later today, and have a real national policy, a real goal, the kind of man on the moon goal that will give us the political will to go to Washington and say, you don't have a choice. You either spend this money in a wasteful fashion on repairing storm damage, or you as we are, follow our, our heritage as a great maritime nation and build coastlines that are going to protect our people, create a new level of, of, of positive relationship between our communities and the sea, and build into that infrastructure the economic engines that we need to go forward as a great nation. Our first speaker today is uh, the EPA regional uh, administrator here in Region 1, Kurt Spaulding. I've known Kurt for a long time. When I first uh, thought about bringing the Harbor lawsuit, I went to a lot of people, and one of them was the director of Region 1 in EPA. I won't mention his name. But he was not a community activist. He was not a true believer. He was not someone there to move us forward and to clean up and protect our environment. 
He was an individual that was put there to run a bureaucracy. Well, Kurt Spaulding is exactly the opposite of that. Kurt Spaulding spent 18 years at Save the Bay in Rhode Island, following up on the great leadership of Trudy Cox in building uh, an organization that has become uh, the image of environmental action in this country. And today, he spent two and a half, almost three years, as regional administrator. Now bringing all that knowledge and that passion to this job and bringing it there so that he can help communities. He's here to work with communities and he's got a very tough job. Uh, my friend, the man I admire and I'm very glad he's in his position, Kurt Spaulding, Regional Administrator, number one, EPA. Well, th thank you very much, Bill. That was a great introduction because it really captured what I, what I believe in and that is supporting and helping communities achieve stewardship and environmental results. Uh, I'm here today actually pinch hitting for Gina McCarthy, who is my new boss and uh, someone many of you know probably pretty well because her presence here is, is well known. Uh, they're still getting used to her accent in Washington, the wickeds and the, and the way she talks to Boston Harbor and, and that sort of thing. But that said, she wishes she could be here because there's nothing she's more passionate about than the success and, and future of, of communities, especially here, here, in, here in New England. So it's a pleasure to be here uh, on, on a number of levels because like Bill, um, we've been thinking about this issue very seriously at EPA. Um, I'm very excited to hear what is being planned because indeed it starts to answer the question that we in the region really can't answer and that's how do you get to scale with regard to investment and action. And this initiative brings and answers that question. Um, I guess it goes without saying that at this point, generally, and a polling is showing this, uh, climate change is a reality, a condition people understand and actually accept as part of their daily and, and uh, yearly lives. They know it's real. Um, we had Senator Whitehouse speak at a meeting I held in uh, Providence on Friday. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, but he shared very personally that uh, he thinks the political wind is changing, that conditions are changing. Are they changing fast enough? No, but we know that the basic problem that plagued this effort for years has now essentially uh, behind us. Uh, sometimes it takes a little while for Washington to catch up to reality, but uh, we, hope, we hope they soon will. Um, the other thing this conference speaks to that is so important is systems level change, systemic solutions. It's a, it's a word and term I've brought to the region. Um, I don't think it's a big surprise to you that if you wanted to criticize EPA, you could say at times, we tend to, we tend to stay right narrow in our box and be very reductionist about our, our outcomes. Um, that needs to change. And in fact, Gina has said very clearly to all of us, she wants outcomes, she wants them on the community level, she's tired of rules in Washington. So, and indeed, that's, that's something this initiative is talking about. Systemic change, how do we get to scale? How do we make things happen at a level that, that matters so much to everyone? Um, now, I, I don't know if you all know this, but uh, in my job, I have this great pleasure of traveling all over New England right after these events happen. So I was on the job about three days, and I was in, uh, well, not actually, a couple of months, and I was in Rhode Island with that huge rainstorm, a stacked rainstorm event in March when the ground was still frozen. And who would have thought we would have seen four feet of water on Route 95? In fact, 95 was closed for days in Rhode Island. Wastewater plant, the Warwick wastewater plant, servicing, servicing about 30,000 people. Um, no one would ever have thought the, the plant would, literally the buildings would be filled with water right to the ceiling. Um, what could happen? I mean, it was beyond the imagination of anyone there that this could happen. Now that was a relatively small event, event geographically, but then we go to Vermont uh, not long after that for, for Hurricane Irene and see a devastated state uh, with, with the rivers flooding uh, communities up and, down, uh, up and down the whole length of, of Vermont.